Hi, I'm a November person. I think Novembers are cool, okay? Not only are they cool, they are also extremely underrated. And recently I feel like Novembers are just ignored. Novembers are being pushed into oblivion and I don't like that. Because people are so focused on Halloween and on Christmas that they fail to find any charm in this most charming of months. Novembers are slowly becoming victims of consumerism and I will not have that. Mm -mm -mm. So I propose reclaiming Novembers and celebrating them exactly the way they're supposed to be celebrated, which includes several things in my case. First of all, I need a good outfit. So usually when I think November, I think early Victorian era, but this time I was already working on an early 1800s dress that I did not finish in October and I kind of needed that final kick to get working on it. So I thought, you know what? I might as well make a video about it. By the way, it's so dark. It's already so dark. I'm using my like desk lamp here because it's already dark outside. Uh, but Novembers are cool though. So what I did is I basically copied a dress I made several years ago, which fit quite well. So I thought, you know what? I might as well just copy paste <laughs> the whole thing. And I used a similar fabric to the one I used before, which was thin cotton, completely inappropriate for November but looks good so I just laid it flat and I followed the shapes and the pieces of the original dress when cutting out the new ones it's really not that complicated and it's also probably not the most precise method but it's a method I like using when I have a piece that I know fits well and I don't feel like starting all over again with making a new pattern because it's been years ago that pattern has been lost forever let's face it the most problematic pieces to copy were the gathered ones because I kind of had to guess how much fabric was involved and what shape but I just kind of measured and estimated how wide the ungathered piece would be. For example the back piece turned out to be a rectangle just gathered at the top so I knew I had to make the top just as wide as the bottom like it wasn't black magic. So the pattern I followed originally was I think a pattern from the Cat of Women's Clothes by Nora Wall mm -hmm. and it was constructed thus. The side pieces were joined together with the back piece. It was like one huge piece. And then those would be tied or pinned to the stays or to the petticoat, whatever you're wearing underneath. I'm pinning this because it's holding it more firmly, but you could just tie them together. The shoulder straps in the pattern are quite short and they're basically just used to connect uh, the side pieces and the back piece with the sleeves. So this whole piece is attached to the back of the skirt and you have slits on the sides of the skirt that serve a you to put the garment on and then you take the front bodice piece which is attached to the front of the skirt and you either pin it on the sides or use buttons which was what I was supposed to use but uh, gave up at some point I'll talk about that later so then you tie the side pieces of the skirt together at the center back and you can use those little loops sort of like uh, what would you call them and this whole thing, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between is called bib front dress or a drop front dress in some cases. So I cut out all the pieces and then I started sewing them together, which again was not a super complicated process. Another day, another slay. Especially since I could check with the original piece to see which part connects where. I gather the fabric with my fingers to create the gathers, which in hindsight might have been a bad idea because the gathers are not like super evenly distributed, but also I don't really care. I also gathered the top of the front bodice using those little tiny pleats every now and then, which is supposed to make it lay on my bust better. Then I tried it on, I, I sewed everything together and that was it, it was done. Just kidding, uh, here comes the hard part. So because the fabric is so thin and the dress was supposed to be delicate, I had to hand finish every seam and raw edge and finish it thin. Like make that hem invisible, make that dress a skinny legend, work that needle like it's 
There is no possible way to finish it without it sounding inappropriate, so let's just drop that. So here started my long hand sewing journey, which was a blast, honestly, love that stuff. I got a migraine twice. I tried watching movies, I tried sewing in a car, but at the end of the day, let's face it, a lot of the inside seams are still begging for some treatment and they will beg till the day they disintegrate. I think I whip stitched, if that's how you call it, most of the outer seams because honestly they probably won't deal with too much tension and wear. I um hand sewing the 84. But originally I think you would top stitch the seams together and the pieces together. But again, I don't care, I'm gonna whip stitch that bit. So now that the dress was more or less done, uh, it was time for figuring out the accessories. Now, I was definitely not going for a super historical look because according to history, I would have to wear a coat over the dress, not to mention several other accessories that would make this a day dress instead of some horish display of goods. Uh, what I'm saying is I would probably have to wear a fichu or chemisette on top of my neckline, some sort of oversleeves to cover my arms, but because I didn't want to, I did not. So my dress, even though it's kind of a day dress, I wore it as I would if it was evening wear, except no gloves, and it was during the day. So it didn't make a lot of sense, but it made sense in terms of looking good, you know? So I had a particular necklace in mind. It was sort of too late to search for it, so I wrote an emergency text to my historical jewelry making friend, and I was like, I'm looking for this particular style. And she was like, okay, I can make that for you, I guess. And I was like, yeah, but I kind of need it now. And she was like, it's sent. She sent it the very same day. I'll link her in the description, by the way, if you want to have a look. I also ordered some hair pieces. I thought my short hair requires some sort of volume, but it turned out it didn't really work out. The pieces that I bought were super thin and it just looked like lonely, long strands of hair. I also had a pair of leather boots that I used for my winter Regency style escapades. So I decided to use them and again, it completely does not fit the outfit historically, because with a dress like that and a necklace and like a bear uh, bubage, you'd probably wear some beautiful silk covered flats. But no, I just went for leather boots because A, it was muddy and B, I kind of feel like a gothic independent heroine would probably sport a look like that, you know? It's kind of like Converse, but in the Regency era. So now that the outfit was ready, I had to do my makeup quickly, which consisted of the usual stuff, oh, which is not much and not good. <laughs> And then I quickly did my hair, but I ran out of time to record it. So when I was doing my hair, I was like, okay, I need to use the strands because I paid money for them. So I used a curling iron to sort of curl them and then I put them on rollers for them to keep that shape. In, at the end of the day, they were just too thin. I tried to incorporate them in my hairstyle, but it didn't look great. So I just put them at the back of my head and I sort of pinned them in place. And that was the end of this sad hair story. So now that the outfit was ready, it was time for some typical November activities. First of all, give me one other time of the year where you can sit by candlelight and write letters and poetry while listening to the wind howl outside. There is literally no other better time to do that than in November. So seize that opportunity. Second of all, Bronte books are basically November, but in a book form. So of course I'll be reading all of them. Here is my personal list of best to worst Bronte novels, because I finally read them all this year. Let me know what you think in the comments, but unarguably it's a November read. And third of all, November is all about fog and crows and ravens and naked trees and long walks during which you imagine you're a romantic heroine in search of a better fate.
Honestly, people treating November like it's a mediocre port of the grand house of Christmas are clearly not taking enough gloomy walks, thank you. This is in no way a diss for people that treat November as a pre-Christmas period. Uh, you do you, I'm just saying, it's a cool month on its own. Bye.